we know that there is not enough houses in Australia for the people that are coming in via migration and people who exist here and there's not enough buildings being built, blah, 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 all known. I'm curious. Imagine I removed that and I just said there were just enough houses for everybody to live in. Do you, would you be freaking out right now from everything that you're seeing, from interest rate rises, from wages, from everything? Or do you think that it is one component of something else that is kind of making this an equilibrium property market, like a 0%. Okay, so you're suggesting if there wasn't such a supply and demand imbalance, right? So let's say that yep. there's even a little bit too much supply. Okay, it's slightly over, right? We've got some room. I'm fine with that too. Yep. Fine Would I be Where more people- concerned about what's going on around the world with interest rate rises and things like that in the Australian housing market? Completely. That's my question. Yeah. Okay, that's the question. Uh, absolutely. I think that what you're describing is the force that's essentially saving the Australian property market. And that was one of the views that I had looking at the CoreLogic report. And, and it, it walked through so many interesting points, which is like inflation's, uh, sorry, inflation's rampant, interest rates are up, cost of, li- like, uh, cost of living is obviously inflation, wages are not changing, like all of these things which are pretty bad and impact the people's ability. But then it's like this one side of going, Oh, and we just don't have enough houses significantly, right? Plus we've got immigration coming in. And so my question is, and they pose this thought around, is this the eye of the storm or is this the end of the storm? Noting that, do you think it's the eye of the storm? Do you reckon this is just going to be a blip on the radar for a couple of months or do you think that this is the end of the storm? Do you know what? I want to ask you the same question though. I want to reverse this one. So what's what's your view on that? Do you think this is done or the eye? I think... So you know, I was talking to you about this. So I, I see this as a game of tug of war, right? <laughs> you've got 20 10-year-old kids on one side and you've got this one massive 250-kilo guy on the other side just leaning back. <laughs> and wait, 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 wait. Who's, what's on what side? Right? I want to know here. So is this like this is, uh, Philip Lowe and interest rates on one side and then bank policy and APRA? What's on the other side? Under supply of housing. <laughs> The 250 kilo person is the other supply of housing. Everything else would be make me super scared, like completely bearish. And I'm like, I'm concerned. But then there's this just this one massive guy that is pulling, that's just like leaning on this rope that goes the complete opposite direction. And I'm like, if that guy let go, then it's it's screwed. But I'm like, the problem is he's not letting go and there is no and I've, I've intellectualized tried to intellectualize with this there's no swing of a bat that you can just go and create a hundred thousand houses like there's just no bat that you can swing for that i've thought of it there is i've actually thought about this are you ready if the government was serious <laughs> about it. solving inflation deport people go on a mass deportation instead of bringing three hundred thousand people a year into the country kick three hundred thousand people a year out of the country shift the supply that. dynamics in housing in a big way if you can't build the dwellings right which i agree i think it's impossible to in the short term meet the needs of housing and accommodation if you were to get change the variables right you know like this is like the exercise and diet thing it's like oh, i'll just run more to burn more calories maybe just don't eat as much right? you can you can attack this from two different le- lenses here or two different ways if we started deporting huge amounts of people what do you think would happen? No, I, I get it, but then it has so many other ramifications to the economy, but I get what you're putting down, <laughs> to which they won't do it. Well, you see this in um, things even in localised markets. So if you look to, uh, like, let's say there's a small regional town that becomes a, a ghost town, mm-hmm. what do you think happens in that town as population falls? Yeah, prices drop. What a shocker. <laughs> do you think interest rates had any effect on that? <laughs> No, but, uh, but do you see, you know why they're doing such large immigration and importing people and trying to get people back into Australia, obviously. I, I just don't yeah, think they're going to pull that trigger. All right, so let's, um, so to go deeper into this, do we, do we think the, this is the eye of the storm or are we done? Just short answer, where are we, Grant? I think we are done for a little bit. For, and when I say a little bit, call it two years. Tell Maybe, you what, I'm, I'm, I'm going yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go on the record twice in one episode. I'm going to do it. We're done. This is it? Yeah, this Hang is on. it. I'm going, to, I'm going to back this one up because I think this is a really important thing. When people 
um, say, oh, look, there's not enough housing. Do you know how far off it is? Do you know how in balance the supply and demand is? It's like a couple of hundred thousand houses. Yeah. It's uh, estimated and at 400,000 houses or 400,000 uh, accommodation type, right? The townhouse. Dwellings. Fit, fit the mix. Yep. Right. So then the second part of that is that um, we do actually have uh, vacant homes in Australia. Like you can get on realestate.com.au now and there's houses for sale, there's places for rent, but they're just not in places people want to live. Right, so they're not in the right spot. So supply and demand has this interesting dynamic where it's like, let's say they put a hundred thousand houses in the middle of nowhere. It's not going to solve this. They've got to put a hundred thousand houses in the right places to actually have an effect on supply and demand. It's like that's the idea, right? If you have been, you know, it's the idea. You know that? Uh, no, I won't make that point. It kind of goes off topic, but it's like, I don't think people are going to be attracted to a substitute. It's like, oh, you could buy a house here. It's like, yeah, but I work here. My kids go to school here. I don't need accommodation in the middle of nowhere. That's not going to solve this for me, All right? So that's one side of it in here. And then, again, I went deep this week, Grant, because I was very curious about this as well when it comes to the uh, unit market. Because for people to be justifying going into units instead of houses, it's like, well, clearly the supply and demand isn't in favour. Like if you ask most people they would love to live in a house that's relative size, it's like, well, why are they compromising and living in smaller apartments or townhouses then? You know, and some will say they don't want to clean the whole place or maybe they're older, but for the vast majority, it's because they can't afford it. Yep. That's the dynamic, affordability. All right. So digging deeper into this one, and Grant's like, damn, Charlie, you spent way too much time researching property this week. I was going to put my points on top. It's fine. I get you. I did. I did. I went on to um, – I heard a really interesting podcast with uh, Terry Ryder and another gentleman, which I cannot may, uh, remember his name at the moment. Um, and then I listened to a, uh, another podcast and they were talking about the ABS building approvals. Mm -hmm. And so Australia's approved the idea of bringing 300,000 uh, people into the country a year is what we're doing. This isn't a joke. This is literally what we're doing. They've put it out. You can uh, put into it. And I log into the ABS and I've got it in front of me. It's like the January 2023 seasonally adjusted estimate is total dwelling approvals fell 27.6%. Right. So we're already undersupplied and the approvals are falling faster due to interest rates, right? A lot of people aren't building or because they can't get uh, things into the country to do the builds or interest rates are preventing them from creating pr profitable developments. And I'm like, this squeeze is just going to get worse. I concur. The one thing that, so my question to you is like, so I believe this is going to go on a tear for one to two years. Like, I, I just think that there's just too much pressure. The one thing that I found fascinating, so I went back and looked at um, this, the Australian Parliament came out with this thing in like 2019, um, where they were talking about like how Australia's housing crisis, which dude, we've seen this for ages. And they, there was an undersupply of 180,000 houses at that point, or dwellings, I should say, at that point. And obviously, we never caught up. Like, it was just, that was just it. And so I go, okay, well, maybe that is where the equilibrium is. Maybe we just live as a country with an undersupply of 180,000. And that is a good tightrope and tension between prices and supply, like demand and supply. And then I go, uh, it's, so too, if we're, it's too close. It's unhealthy. I still stand by that, but continue. I, Concur. And so then I go, okay, well, if we're 350, 450,000 houses or dwellings under supply now, I'm like, we just need to, we do need to catch up. And we are adding more petrol and fire by bringing more people in, noting that the more people that we're bringing in are sort of students and people who are going to rent and they're probably okay with apartments and stuff like that. So my belief or my thought around this is apartment buildings go up over the next couple of years. We start seeing that trend of those approvals hopefully will pivot in the next year or so. The building approvals and the completions will start pivoting for apartments and it will just slow down. The, the And when I say a tear, like the growth just going crazy. It'll just slow it down because we're seeing the trend. It wouldn't have solved it at that point. I think this thing's going to take five, 10 years to solve. I just think that the investors would have realized it now, got in, and then it would have normalized. And then they go, cool, it's just going to take us five years, but we're on the right path on that. So I just think that's a one to two year tear. I think you believe in government way too much. <laughs> no, I, I believe in the private market to an they extent. They haven't solved this in the last 10 years. Why are they suddenly solving it in the next five? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not saying competence go up. I'm not. No, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying they're going to solve it. I'm more saying that 
people will be able to intellectualize with, oh, this seems as though it's solvable. I just don't think it would be, it probably would never be solved in Australia. Just, All right, so let's just go through there. Will. Just humor me on this a little bit then, Grant. So you're a developer. Uh, yep. What are you trying to do? Make profit. Dude, I'm holding back stock because I want to make as much profit as I can. All right. So why would you change that? No, but, and then, but that's what I'm saying is that people will start seeing stats of approvals go through. People will start seeing apartment buildings coming onto the market. Like they will start, people will intellectualize lies and say, this seems as though it's solvable. It's not solved. We just see it. Or the price has already been baked into the market. I just don't look at this changing anytime soon. I, I, I appreciate your uh, optimism. But this, from my point of view, it's like I don't see it. I think this is an ongoing problem in Australia for quite a while from here. I think but that don't we're going to keep. Yeah, so I'm going to jump in here. Don't you think that as investors, we will get to a point where we go, great, we have seen the opportunity of the market being squeezed on an undersupply. And so we're willing to bet on that and invest in that and we will take the wins as it goes. But then it gets to a point where we're like, it's very difficult for us to justify any higher of a price for yields or potential growth or otherwise. And then just normalizes based on this squeeze that we're in right now. Yeah, so can, um, you're kind of asking a few questions in one here or kind of- I'm definitely stacking it up, yeah. Yeah, and like we can't blanket state this one either. Is like, I don't expect the premium markets to do well why interest rates are high. So if interest rates keep going up, I can't see places that uh, have high levels of debt going up because those properties become harder to buy. All right? That's why. So we've got to really like look at the layers of this. Just like I mentioned before with supply and demand, is like if the supply is in the wrong place, it's not really supply. Right? If you wanted to go out for dinner and get a steak and there's no steak or very limited steak, so you go to a restaurant, right? And they're like, look, we've only got five steaks tonight. You can pay a little bit more and get a steak, or you can have chicken or you can do you were really wanting a steak i'll pay a bit more for my steak yeah but some people will not right they shift to chicken but Tell that's it. the whole idea of like supply and demand in, in theory of like well people will pay a premium when there is a limited amount and you see this in a, in a whole bunch of things that come in it so what i think is really challenging in what you're saying right now is that it's so generalized so so generalized across all these things and it's like hey. there's so many layers to it so um to your point let's say you know there's interest rates going up is really negative for um, property markets. Yes. Right. So the higher interest rates go, you know, that's not a great thing for property investors. That's like something that's a, what you call it, a headwind. Mm -hmm. But then a tailwind is, you know, immigration, population growth. We've also got like why. government stimulus and infrastructure and jobs and things like that. We've also got mining, right? We're a big exporter. We're doing all these things with uh, green uh, metals, which would tell us that, you know, there's some tailwinds there for our economy in general. So when I look at all of these forces and things that are going on and just incentives, like as I said, it's like developers want to make money. I don't know a developer out there thinking they're uh, so solving the uh, housing crisis. I understand what they're really doing. They might, you know, soft sell on the second. Yeah, no, I'm helping Australians housing supply. And I'll give them credit, they are. But they're also very interested in making a profit. I don't see them doing it unprofitably. Totally. Funnily enough, I think we're saying similar things. It's more, I just think that uh, if I was to articulate it in, in a better way, and you are correct, I'm, I'm significantly overgeneralizing just to make sure that we don't talk about this for four hours like you and I usually do. <laughs> Which is, I'm like, I think that there's, I think the next year or two is going to be crazy. Like, I think we're just going to see some weird things in some different markets. And I, I concur with you on uh, there are markets in markets and not to go like specifics on it, but de definitely agree. I just believe as though what we see over the next year, maybe two years, will be very different to what we see after it. I just don't think it's going to go vertically up on property prices across in different markets for a decade until they potentially solve. I guess we'll find out. Time will tell. Totally. All right, fellow property investor. If you loved the value from this short video and wanted to know more about how you can win at property investing, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now. Alternatively, click subscribe and you'll never miss another one of these videos.